What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla. If you are new here, if you're a returner, welcome back. So today, I wanted to share my experience when it came to flying with my five-month-old from California to North Carolina. Woo, 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 woo. So let's get right into the video. For starters, our flight took off early in the morning, so it was definitely one of those moments where I was kind of scared, like, is she going to be awake the whole time because she got to sleep through the night? Or is she going to still sleep because of all the noise and like, I don't know. I had no clue what to expect, right? I know a lot of new moms, if you're watching this, maybe you're about to fly with your newborn baby or your baby in general. Uh, you might be thinking like, it's, it's nerve wracking. You know, you have a lot of nerves and I was flying by myself with her as well because my man was actually driving both cars across country. So he went one time and then he flew back and then went a second time. So it was really just me and her and I was kind of like, I don't know what to expect. So I flew with Southwest and we got to bring luggage free, all those different things. So I checked everything. I made sure that I didn't have any actual like suitcase, suitcases that would go on top because it's just too much work right and so i had decided originally and i was so nervous about this but i was going to fly with her in her car seat and then gatekeep her stroller so i could have it in the layovers and stuff like that so for her to be able to fly in her car seat on the plane we had to buy her a plane ticket and the reason why we decided to do that it was very like showy showy but we decided to do that because i personally felt like you know when it comes to babies they like that security feeling they don't like to be in crazy unknown places and sometimes the airports especially around the holidays and stuff can be really hectic and so i felt like she knows her car seat her comfort zone is her car seat not only that it'll be easier for me because i can push her to the stroller like push her with the stroller and the car seat connected all those different things like i just felt like maybe it'll be easier than carrying her i also had surgery not too long ago so i was just nervous about like that many hours carrying her like on the kangaroo so i was just like i think car seat is best and the tickets had got like low like really low for a moment so it was like why not it's only a one-way ticket you know so we got me and her both a flight so she can bring her car seat and so <laughs> hi baby so we go, we go to check the bags. Obviously my man, he was like walking us all the way in. He was really nervous about leaving us. So we go up to the Southwest desk after like getting our tags and our bags and you give it to them and they do like the, like sending it to the plane, whatever. Um, and so we go to the lady and she's just like really nice. She's talking to us and we start telling her like, oh yeah, you know, cause she's like, oh, why are y'all going to North Carolina? Like for the holidays, whatever the case may be. So we start just telling her like, oh, we're actually moving and he's gonna drive. And so we're flying alone. And she ended up actually giving him a ticket, not to fly on the plane, but just to take us all the way up to the gate. So I definitely recommend just bringing it up to them. And they said that they're able to do that, especially if it's like moms flying alone or just different things like that. So that's something that I didn't know and I was able to like learn and figure out. Definitely, if you're nervous or anything, go up to the front desk and just ask them, hey, can he walk us? Because it is gonna be like hectic, it's a lot. Whatever the case may be, he wants to make sure we get on the plane, um, you know, safely. So he ended up being able to walk us. So as we go through TSA, we had our full can of formula because I wanted, when flying, I always think about like if planes get delayed, um, if your flight gets somehow canceled or just anything. And I mean, we just seen that happen around the holidays with all of the airlines and stuff. So I just feel like it's really important to prepare for the worst then not be prepared at all. So personally, what we decided to do was bring the whole tin of formula and bring a whole bunch of water. Obviously water you can buy, you know, in one of the stores, but formula you can't. So I felt like I'm gonna take the whole thing. And I didn't know if I was like allowed to, I was just like, it is what it is. We'll see what happens when I get to TSA. So we get to TSA and come to find out you are able to bring as much liquids as you need, as long as it's totally obvious that it's for the baby and not for like you, you know, they do test it. Um, I know that for us, honestly, it was like they just kind of did like a scan. Uh, they put it in this little thing and it just scans water. So they're not actually opening up your bottle, you know what I mean? Or like dipping something into it. None of that. None of that. It's honestly just like an all outside scan. So they tested the water. They did a test of the formula. Cool. We were good to go. I have realized for the stroller, at least this is for like LAX, they made it where you had to like put the car seat through the machine. So you had to take it off, put it on there. You also had to um, take off the stroller, 
put it on the machine and it goes through the like conveyor belt too to be scanned and then you take your baby and you carry like I carried her in my arms and we went through the scanner you don't go through the scanner like the big one because that one obviously had a, has a lot of like UV rays and different things but you go through the little tiny one and if they need to patch you down they'll patch you down okay so after we made it through we started making our way to our gate honestly she was doing completely fine this whole time if anything she was just being more nosy than anything <laughs> she was looking around at people she was looking around like what's going on but she definitely was awake so i was just like okay she's doing good we get to our gate we kind of just waited for the whole entire gate case um and then after that we it was time to get on the plane so we boarded and at first i think people were very confused that i had my car seat not the flight attendants and the pilots but like passengers getting on so they were kind of like looking at me or like you know i kind of heard like a couple comments of just like oh is she allowed to do that or something let me tell y'all y'all are allowed to do that the flight attendant everybody knew i had my car seat i paid for the ticket you're able to do that so i just felt like i don't even care you know like um people can think what they want because you know as the seats kind of start getting piled up people are like she's taking up a seat she's taking up a seat i was paying them no line you are able to do that so <laughs> We end up um, taking off and all that stuff. And honestly, she did amazing. While we, people were boarding, she honestly fell asleep. And a cool thing about Southwest is that if you don't get in that A group to get on first, you can go on family boarding, which happens before the B group. So for the first flight, we weren't on A. We were on like, we were like B2 or something. So we just did family boarding. But um, on the second one, we were on the A. So we just got on with that so we could get ahead. And it worked out perfectly fine. She slept the, basically the whole, so the first plane ride, it was like two hours and a half. She slept the whole time. It was the noise, I think. Um, and, you know, a lot of people say, oh, feed your baby on the way up and feed your baby on the way down or the ears are going to pop and stuff. And honestly, I was nervous about that because I didn't do that. But the truth is, is that I just wasn't really like, like she fell asleep and I tried to wake her up, but she didn't want to wake her up, wake up. So I was just like, okay, I'm just going to let her sleep. And I will tell y'all, like personally, she was fine. She slept the whole time. She didn't wake up. She never cried about her ears or anything. But I do have more of an easygoing baby. So I'm not going to sit here and say that it can't happen or it won't happen in the future because she is only five months. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, okay, so after that, we take off first flight. Cool. We get to the layover. This is kind of the funny part. So... I didn't know that you had to actually go up to the like the attendants whatever they're called the people that are before you get on the flight so like you know the ones that are checking your boarding pass and getting you into the flight so basically I didn't know that you go up to them to gatekeep your stroller so we get we land I think we land in like Nashville or like Dallas Texas something whatever and the stroller wasn't there and so I go to a flight attendant and I'm like on our plane she was so nice and I was just like oh like our stroller's not here like do they bring it up like this is my first time doing this and now I'm confused and she was like oh it wasn't gay cats but what they did is I mean y'all they they did like 10 minutes of trying to just help me figure it out so they're sitting here like um yelling off from the top of the plane yelling at the people below who do the bags and stuff like bring up the purple stroller the purple stroller all these different things the pilot had to come out put the code the code wasn't working they had a call to like the head people you know the ones that are in the tower the tower center or whatever to get a new code it was just so crazy so eventually I got the stroller and I was like wow thank you so much so now I know for the next time because if not it'll go underneath the plane and go straight to baggage claim wherever you land but I didn't know all that you know so gatekeep your stroller y'all <laughs> and then uh we get on our next plane perfectly fine that time she was awake for like an hour but that's when toys come in handy I have brought different toys I brought little bears she doesn't play with too many toys yet but she does play with enough. So I was able to like bring, you know, little toys for her to play with here and there. I did have bottles, obviously. So I was like making bottles and all that. So overall, I would say my flying experience went really, really well. She wasn't like crying. She wasn't, you know, having pain with her ears. Um, it was easy going with the formula and the water for the bottles. It was easy going with the car seat. It made it so much easier. I know the kangaroo is obviously like, you know, carrying your baby is obviously 
beneficial you don't have to buy a flight they get to sit on your lap but you know i was thinking longevity wise all together i think our travel time was like eight hours and i was just like my baby is not light she's she's a very heavy baby um and so i kind of was like i don't think i can personally just do it and be comfortable at the same time for that long and and i was thinking about her comfortability too and i'm like i don't think she'll be comfortable because in in the carrier you know all the weight of their body is also kind of in a way on their legs and so i just was like i don't know you know maybe not so yeah that is my flight experience my quick tips like i said would just be to make sure to gatekeep <laughs> your stroller if you have a layover um so then you're able to get your stroller right when you get off that plane it's sitting in the like bungalow thing my second thing would not to worry about formula or breast milk or bottles or water or anything like that because it's such an easy process for you to just go through. My third thing would be if you can bring a car seat, definitely bring a car seat because I feel like they also are just more comfortable. I think in her eyes, she probably felt like we were just in our car, honestly, because of the fact that that's what we typically do. We have her in a car seat. She might take a nap while we drive. So it was just so much better for her. She was comfortable in it. Um, I got to have the stroller. It was just really, really easy. You know, even when I wanted to get food or snacks, it's like I have my stroller, you know? So I definitely recommend that. Um, and honestly, I think that's pretty much everything I would say for me wise and, you know, toys and stuff, of course. And if you can have your partner or anybody um, walk with you to the gate just to make it a little bit easier, especially going through the TSA process, because obviously you have to like, undress yourself everything in tsa is very fast you have to undress yourself a little bit like take off your shoes and stuff any hoodies you have to take the stroller take the car seat put it through there you have to get your baby ready to go through everything so it's a lot happening at one time and so you know they're taking stuff out your backpack the formula the bottles the this that you have to put it back so i would just say if you do if you can have somebody go through that process with you i definitely recommend it because it's just too much at one time you know but overall thank y'all for watching i hope that my flight experience and my flight story of what i decided to do and how we were able to fly so easily helps y'all um and if you ever have any questions or anything like that definitely comment down below because i know i was like a scared mom who had so much anxiety but it was such a breeze so i'm grateful for that but thank you all for watching definitely like comment share and subscribe and i will see you on the next video bye